During isolation, our temptation and tendencies uh, to sin are magnified. So I've written this message called Temptation in Isolation. Um, we look inwardly at ourselves. We do look outwards, but we look outwardly at the wrong things, I think. Um, and we very rarely, I would say, um, give the situation to God and look upward to him. Um, for me, being in isolation at home um, has led to a number of my tendencies to sin becoming more appealing to me. So I make more trips to the fridge and to the biscuit tin than I would normally. Um, I exercise less than I would. Um, that may be surprising for people to hear, but it's true. Um, I get up later, I go to bed later, I read my Bible with less of a pattern. Um, I spend more time thinking about me and how this whole situation affects me and less time thinking about other people and how this situation affects them and how I can help them. Um, you might identify with some of these things as well. Um, we are all in these uncertain times and they're unique to our lifetime. You know, nothing like this has ever been imposed on us um, since any of us were born. We're all in this sort of uncharted territory. The thing is, God doesn't only know about our situation. Um, it was no surprise to him at all. He knows what it's like to face temptation in isolation. Um, the Bible gives us a really clear insight in Matthew 4 of Jesus being tempted with the devil um, after he'd been isolated for 40 days. It says, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days, 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. What follows is a string of temptations for Jesus. He's in isolation, he's on his own, he's starving hungry, he's tired, he's totally exhausted. But he resists each one of those temptations and doesn't sin. Um, we can summarise Jesus's temptations from the devil in the wilderness to a group of selfish, me-centred statements. Um, and I think these have a lot of similarity to the situations we're facing currently. So the first one, turn these stones into bread to eat, feed yourself. <laughs> Second one, jump off this rock and the angels will catch you, protect yourself. And third, worship me, I've put as worship yourself or worship whatever you want to worship. So what are the similarities to our temptations and isolation and how does Jesus respond and how might that help us um, as we're going through this really challenging uh, time? first one turn these stones into bread to eat um now there was nothing wrong with jesus wanting to eat a nice meal you know he's been without food for 40 days i know what i'm like if i'm without food for 40 minutes um but it's the lack of focus on god's provision that is what satan is tapping into here with jesus um he's saying make your own food turn this into bread this lack of trust that god is going to provide is very similar i think to the reaction in Exodus, where the Israelites um, were told about manna that God would provide for them each morning. Um, so it says, um, Moses told them, do not keep any of this until morning. But some of them didn't listen. Some of them kept it till the morning. But by then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell. And Moses was very angry with them. As anybody who has tried to get a supermarket delivery slot over the past month or two knows, this speaks clearly into our lives today. Our security feels like it's more in providing for ourselves. Um, and this is being shaken as we panic, get scared, start stockpiling like the Israelites did. Um, we panic by, we get selfish, we keep stuff for ourselves and we take our focus off God as our provider and look to the gods of Tesco and to the gods of Asda instead. So how does Jesus respond to this? No, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We need to stop focusing on our self-provision and look to God. Um, when we get very hungry due to a lack of sustenance of the word of God or by not listening to truth filled music or online messages or reading great Christian books. Our being hungry opens us up 
to devour spiritually anything that the devil might push into our eye line. The second case here of uh, jump off this rock and the angels will catch you. Jesus' response here is, you must not test the Lord your God. And again, we can see a similarity to the story in Exodus. Um, if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us out into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Now, we don't really know why God has allowed us to be brought into this season that we're in now. And the Israelites didn't know why God had allowed them to wander the desert for so long. We are in a truly difficult and upsetting time, just as they were then. But God is using this time for his purposes. Rather than spending time moaning and grumbling and complaining, let's look for opportunities to praise, worship and listen to God and to bring his peace to those around us who are also worried and confused and scared and don't have the same assurance that we have in Jesus. The third thing that he says, worship me. Now, if you're a Christian, it's kind of obvious that you're meant to worship God and God alone. We read Jesus's response and we think, yeah, I'm all over it. You must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then we think about our week so far and what we spent our time doing. Did we spend more time reading Twitter with people second guessing what lockdown might um, look like when it ends um, and following the curve of COVID-19 deaths and how that's been reported by different countries and what that means? Or did we spend time reading God's word, looking for peace, looking for comfort? Um, did we spend more time sharing scary fake news stories and conspiracy theories about how COVID-19 spreads and how it was caused and what that means? Or did we spend some time talking to our non-Christian Facebook friends um, and telling them that God loves them during this pandemic and if their small business is looking like it's going to fail, how can we help them? And God loves them. Um, inviting them over to church at home, you know. Um, did we simply spend more time worshipping our own comfort and provision by binge watching Netflix, eating too many biscuits, spending every hour of the day trying to get a Tesco online delivery slot? Or did we spend quality time worshipping God this week? So there's some personal application that I think comes from um, the account of Jesus's temptation in isolation. The first point I think is really important um, and let's not overlook it. I've not mentioned it till now, um, but who was Jesus with in the wilderness? Um, we know Satan was there. That's been clear because he uh, is the one who's tempting him. But we're told at the start of this passage that the Holy Spirit led Jesus there. Now, I'm not going to try to unpack how, how a triune Father, Son, Holy Spirit is working together here, but I just want to focus on the point that the Holy Spirit was with Jesus as he was battling these temptations. Um, it's the recently, uh, sorry, it has recently been Pentecost, um, and we've been reminded again how the Holy Spirit is present and working in all Christians. Um, to go back to the passage in Acts, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everybody present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So Jesus had the Holy Spirit present with him and we do as well. In 1 Corinthians we're told the Spirit of God dwells in you. This should give us peace that God dwells with us but also gives us strength over anything that we're feeling tempted by. The next thing in this passage that struck me was that each of Jesus's responses is seated in scripture. He says three times that the scripture says, or as the scripture says. 
So we need to confront our temptations and our fears with biblical truth. We need to preach to ourselves and not allow our fears to preach to us. I'm going to say that again. We need to preach to ourselves about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit and not allow our fears to preach into our lives. This can be as easy as choosing a book of the Bible, maybe a psalm, and maybe in this season, Psalm 91, and reading it every morning when you wake up, even two to three lines, and then praying and asking the Holy Spirit to guide you through the day. Or you might have time to do more. Um, whatever you do, base it on biblical truth and not fear. Um, looking up to God. This might be literal, you know, leaving the house, going for a walk and either looking up to the clouds and the stars and remembering that God created them. Um, sometimes when we're stuck at home, we feel insular, we feel trapped, but just getting out for a walk and remembering that God is the creator God um, is helpful, I think. Um, or listening to worship music is a great thing to do as well we've got a playlist on the faith church website at faithchurch.wales slash listen um and it's got a bunch of music on it to help us focus on god and what he's done for us and to remind us of who god is because we forget quite regularly who god is i think in our lives when we try and make ourselves god um with a little g so listening to music, listening to decent Christian uh, music can help. Um, and it, it helps us not to feel um, in a situation where we're going to be hearing stuff that isn't helpful. If we're focusing on being intentional rather than just um, skimming through Facebook and Twitter and clicking on the sponsored links or the trending topics of the day. Pray often as well. Um, now, as we look into as we look in on ourselves, it's very easy to forget to talk to God. Um, I don't think we need to pray long, elaborate prayers, but we're isolated physically. But we can still chat to God during the day and ask him for help, even when the little temptations come up that we face in the day. So we don't need to wait till the end of the day to pray to God or the beginning of the day. I think as we're going through the day, little little prayers as a chat to God is a great way of helping us deal with the um, temptation sort of in isolation. As a community, we can help each other. As a church, we can help each other. As a group of friends, as a group of Christians, we can help each other. Um, Jesus was uniquely God and man. So being tempted in isolation was something that he um, was able to, to cope with and not to not sin in. Um, but God has put us into community. He's put us into community with the Holy Spirit, as we saw um, earlier, but also with each other as well as Christians, friends, groups of people. So I think we need to keep sharing our struggles and our burdens with one another um, so we can pray for one another. And we know that we are part of this community together. Um, we need to pray constantly for one another and we need to thank God for one another and to look for ways we can serve each other and serve our community as well.